Data governance is often brought up as a key component to a successful data project. But when researching what it is and how it works, you'll find a lot of vague explanations and a lack of tangible examples, but plenty of corporate language. So let's dive into what governance models are and how they can be applied. The core problem that data governance is meant to solve is that data in an organization gets messy, lost, confusing, and unknown over time. Think legacy code, but data. The contributors to this often include having multiple versions of truth where two or more systems are collecting and storing data that may not be exactly the same, such as a CRM and sales system having different emails for a customer. Unclear ownership of data or processes. This could be two teams arguing over who has the final say over a set of data or some legacy app data that no one wants to claim. And then unknown context of data that a field called cust ad id 3 and no one knows where it comes from or what it means. And then tied to that is a lack of documentation or when it falls into the document void where it's out there somewhere but nobody can tell you where. And of course any documentation you find is horribly out of date. So data governance exists to solve these problems using a few concepts you need to know first. The data owner is a person that owns a domain of data and has final say over its use and meaning, usually an executive sponsor type. Data stewards represent the data owner and oversees the day-to-day -day usage of data, usually like a subject matter expert. The governance council is a group that meets to hash out data policy and make sure all the owners and stewards are on the same page. Architecture is the technical strategy for gathering, storing, and using data. Documentation of project design, sampling, collection, cleaning, and analysis efforts. Data catalogs are a dictionary of what data exists and where, what it can be used for, and in clear business understandable form. Data standards document the company policy for definition, structure, format, and management of data. Data quality, how reliable a set of data is and what uses it's acceptable for. Some data may be low quality, missing significant values, and is unusable for regulatory reporting, but it's acceptable for discovery or troubleshooting. Policy, rules, principles, and guidelines for data management, business intelligence, data modeling, data security, such as what data is considered PII or what meets other needs for extra security and access restrictions, and then metadata, data about data. Most of these concepts will come up in any implementation of governance, but let's look at some of the different architectures you can go with. In a centralized model, there's a top-down approach, starting with the governance council, which will oversee all aspects of the organization's use of data. They'll also settle disputes between the working teams. These teams will likely exist centrally, probably under the IT umbrella. They'll include things like the architecture teams to set up policy and standards, BI teams for modeling and metadata rules, security possibly tied to overall IT security, and quality control for documentation and data catalogs. This is just an example. Most organizations will split up the work based on their own structure. From there, data is disseminated out to the various business units and teams that need it. This method is heavy leadership and IT involvement. You'll likely see this in companies with tight control over technology resources or smaller companies with heavy leadership involvement in the day-to-day -day activities. In the decentralized model, the many roles and data will be spread out to various teams, departments, and other structures to implement as they see fit. There will be limited central control, probably from IT or a similar function, likely just auditing and large-scale policies. It's up to each silo to independently create their own data process. You'll see this in sprawling companies that have big product silos or companies that have grown through merges and acquisitions, and each entity sort of maintains its own way of doing things. The federated or hybrid model tries to capture the best of both. We're going to have data producers who are going to be responsible for the architecture, modeling, documentation, and so on for each data set they produce. This could be an external application, CRM, HR platform, or anything that generates new data within a company. There are also data consumers who take that data and produce something new from it, such as business intelligence, data science, or other business teams that need data from another domain. In between them sits the governance. Data stewards who all agree to the overall security, standards, policy, and auditing that must be adhered to by all other providers and consumers. And most important is interoperability, which would be specific standards to ensure data can flow between providers and consumers without issue. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of great examples of governance in practice. Despite working across a variety of organizations, I haven't seen a lot of solid governance practices in action, despite it being considered core to data projects and organizational strategy. If you have some thoughts to share, good or bad, be sure to comment on your experience. 
And for an example of the technical side of governance, be sure to watch this video on master data management next.